All right, guys. Got some. We've just ate breakfast. You hear my wife working in the background in the kitchen. Uh, we do videos as life is happening around here, so don't mind any noise. Uh, whew, this fight last night. Uh, I'm going to talk about a little extensively here. Uh, well, not real extensive, but I'm going to give you a little more than any of the other boxing news people will give you. Uh, I'm going to give you a good take here. Number one, what we can take of it. Netflix started crashing. Uh, it is what it is. Uh, number two, the crashing occurred in the United States. Isn't it amazing that the U.S. can find a way to crap on itself repeatedly? Uh, I don't know who owns Netflix, but I'm probably pretty sure, excuse me here, that whoever owns Netflix will get to the fight itself shortly because we know exactly what was going on with Mike Tyson because we do the peekaboo. It's uh, primary style we do. Uh, and I haven't seen one boxing channel talk about what I'm going to talk about on the fight. Uh, and it's because they, they don't know. Uh, but I'm going to give it to you. But first things first. The site crashed. But it didn't crash throughout South America and other places. Uh, it's amazing that the crashing occurred of the site for this big fight in the United States. And this is always, it seems to be the case all the time. So I, I would like, you know, I'm going to do some research later today. Uh, you guys know we're going through pure hell here in Colombia. Uh, pure f effing persecution, uh, violence, uh, a lot of stuff we're going through here in Colombia, South America. But we're still functioning. Uh, so I don't want to talk about all that, but I want to refresh everybody's memory that we're still going through the mass that we're going through. Uh, yeah, amazing how that we, and this happens in a lot of venues, the crashing happens in the U.S. or the U.K. And the rest of the world gets to sit and watch uninterrupted, beautiful uh, video. Motion picture, whatever you want to call it. That's the first takeaway. Second thing I want to talk about is something that got way over mentioned. Now I'm going to tell you why. Uh, I can't tell you why it got over mentioned, but the biting of the gloves. This occurred uh, just to my naked eye uh, once or twice in the fight. And for some reason or another, they wanted to make a huge issue of it. And it wasn't a huge issue at all, but I'm going to tell you why it happened. Uh, the when you get older and this happened to me 10, 12 years ago well no maybe about 8 years ago 7 years ago I had gotten my old backside into tremendous shape I was stadium climbing working with uh, uh, weight working with doing body weight calisthenics I was just in it and boxing and uh, I found at, at an older age and then I found out why it was happening and I believe this to be the case with Mike biting on the gloves seeming to be an issue with the mouthpiece I believe it was an issue with the mouthpiece I think what happened to him happened to me some years ago and uh, 
I later found that uh, I, I have cardiovascular problems uh, in that clogged uh, arteries. And <clears throat> they had to go up in me and do, do some work and stuff uh, orthoscopically, you know, where they go up in, I believe they went up in my wrist and a vein and went up and cleaned some stuff out. But I was gagging when I'd have a mouthpiece in too. And I shortened the mouthpiece to where the mouthpiece didn't come back that far on the side, right? And I was still gagging. And what happens is, is when you can't get enough oxygen in your system, uh, when, when you're older, I assume if you, you're having these problems, when you're older, you have them when you're younger, if you got major heart disease or arterial sclerosis or something. But uh, Mike was not getting enough oxygen and Mike didn't normally bite his gloves. I, one of the announcers was saying, Oh, he consistently throughout his career was constantly uh, glove biting in his all his fights, and I'm like, no, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. That's fake news right there, and, it, and we even got fake news in sports. Now, Mike was having trouble getting oxygen. Now, you might say, well, why would he bite or do something like that, or or even go up to the to the mouth with the gloves. I'm gonna tell you why he was gagging. Because the brain will send an impulse reaction to the throat uh, when you can't get oxygen. It's like if you get choked and you start coughing, or well, you don't re really coughing, you start gagging. And I believe Mike Tyson was gagging for lack of being able to get the oxygen that his body was requiring. Second thing I want to talk about, us being, uh, you're going to see, you will see, us being at the forefront of active boxing in that peekaboo style, in the custody of motto way. Uh, I didn't pick up on this, but Joe picked up on it immediately. He, he said, something's wrong. He cannot shift in the peekaboo style. Now, maybe I put a video up later. I don't like giving the information away, to be honest with you. I don't like showing people that these technical things that we do and we work on. And I looked back and I was like, son, you got it. You're right on it. He couldn't do shifting that, that is required with his legs as he was going forward in a normal fashion. And that probably took 30 to 60% of the effectiveness of his style away. Uh, now we've seen the knee brace and all of that. Mike Tyson didn't make an issue of it, so I'm not. Uh, but something was wrong there. Uh, and it, the, the most amazing thing is, is that there's all, there's 50,000 boxing news channels. You've got all these former uh, world champions and nobody can see their own sport. They can't even see their own sport. And it just amazes me. And I'm going to tell you guys something. Uh, and you can take it to the bank. Jake Paul is a good, decent boxer for today. So a good, listen to my words, a good, very decent boxer for today's standards. You saw a damn near 60 year old man able to perform like you did because uh, back in my day we were a different breed a different engineered male kind that you don't see today you see it but it's rare when you see it 
It has almost killed the boxing. Uh, anybody from the early 80s going on back in time from welterweight on up could have annihilated either one of these Paul boys. All right. uh, there's something soft going on. I put my fingers, my mind is like a thousand points of light going out to, uh, going out in general. And yet I can't put my finger on one specific thing. So therefore, I'm convinced that it is a combination of things. I don't, I don't know what it is. Uh, I don't know. I can't, I can't tell you. There's so many things I, I don't. I would be too nervous to name one thing off. And this is why we do things completely different than 80% of the people out there. And the old school guys have evolved and changed and they can't even see that in their own brains. The old school trainers, the old school, uh, not all of them, but most of them, folks in boxing, these guys that were training people in the 1960s, something's evolved and changed in their brains and they can't see what they're doing today. So, boxing is in trouble. It's in trouble. Uh, boxing is not how much you can make at the gate. That ain't the thing. It is a sport. And we need to start taking that back into consideration. We need people that will get up in this sport like they do uh, bare knuckle and BKFC, for example, who make legends and lore of themselves that will be talked about a hundred years from now. All this YouTube uh, internet boxing is uh, going to uh, not be looked on so favorable. And uh, it is what it is. I don't disparage somebody trying to make some money. We need so much money right now, it ain't even real. We're trying to get back to the United States. So I'll do you a better one, but it won't happen. And here's why it won't happen. Both those Paul boys know that 16-year-old Joe Allen will mop the floor up with either one of them. But here's my thing. Instead of those two boys, and, and I'm not saying I don't like them, or and I'm, nothing like that, but I would tell them, instead of fighting the past, why don't you get step your asses up and fight the future? Even if it's in a sparring, and give Joe a try, and you'll get educated. You will get educated, and and I'm I'm gonna go off now. We I'm, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna be honest here. Uh, nobody in the U.S. boxing community has one clue as to what's coming to the heavyweight division in the United States. You don't have a clue. You promoters sitting out there, you you you. you, you you ain't. You have no idea. You retired world champions. You have no idea. And when I say this, I don't mean everybody, because a lot of people do have some ideas. A lot of people are seeing what little bit we that Joe shows, and knows where this is going. And this boy, he don't gives one word answers to questions 
and you're direct and to the point, serious. And you all are going to start to see how enjoyable having the baddest man on the planet in y'all's generation behaving like a damn man. Behaving like a tough guy. And that's why everybody, we all look back to Mike Tyson. There ain't no tough guys no more. Uh, there's a lot of tough guys, but you want to know where they're hanging out? They're hanging out over there at the BKFC, and they're fighting with their bare knuckles. That's where the tough guys are. But not in gloved boxing. And gloved boxing's a lot different than bare knuckle. And going and taking bare knuckle guys and putting them in the ring with gloves on, that ain't, no. I'll tell you what, some of you boxers, some of you champion boxers need to go over to the BKFC and take your gloves off and see how that's going to work out for you. See how that works for you. Because boxing is awful today. The only great boxing we have is coming out of the United Kingdom and Eastern Europe. We, the United States couldn't even win a gold medal in boxing. But what do we expect with Betty Crocker commercials on Boxing USA where they're bacon brownies and chocolate cakes and banana bread? So it's open to President Trump too. This is another reason why my country needs to get our family back to the United States. Number one, Joe will win a heavyweight gold medal in Los Angeles for you all. And number two, if you can get the candy asses and the bureaucracy out of Boxing USA, I, along with several other real qualified people, will push these young men and these young women and we'll come back with 13, 14 medals. We'll win the medal count all, all through boxing by a long shot. And I guarantee you that will happen. I guarantee you that will happen. My only fault, looking back and looking at things, is that I start buying into the BS that people put out. I look over there. there there's somebody that uh, he's still living. And I was listening to this cat the other day. And he was like, oh, blah, 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 talking about something. I walked off. I said, yeah, he's right. Oh, oh, yeah. And then I rethought what he said. And I said, this guy's full of it. And this guy should know more in his little pinky than I know in my whole body about the sport of boxing, but he, this guy don't know shit. That's the bottom line to it. It would be me. It would be uh, uh, people like Greg Towns, uh, who's, who's younger than me, but they have the knowledge. Uh, we, and... and and it's amazing those of us that have the knowledge are not, not shoving technical stuff out all over online. And the people that are winning today are getting all the knowledge online. And we're going old school, Jack. And when I say old school, I don't mean the 1990s. Uh, 1990s boxing. Oh, it was great, but uh, you ain't seen boxing. If you ain't damn well over 50 years old, you ain't seen boxing. You don't know nothing. Uh, you didn't live it anyway. So, that's my take on this. Blessings to Mike Tyson. He did a great job. Last thing I'm going to say on this, he said he was doing hallucinogenics. And he kept doing those. I don't know if it's true or it's bad, but uh, taking shit that alters your brain 
and your thought processes and not being able to deal with the world, uh, be it alcohol, drugs, or psychedelic stuff, or whatever it is, ain't, ain't going to show up as strength on fight day. Just not. And uh, it's going to hamper you. It's not going to help you. And I, you know, so I wanted that to be said too. So that's my old man rambling for the day. Uh, we've been running these punks away, but they keep doing things like throwing beer bottles at us from a distance and stuff. And uh, uh, we've got a couple of more guns. And I don't know where it's going to go, but we're hoping and praying. More than anything, if anybody wants to do anything for us, pray that we get back to the U.S. and we get back safely. And then we have the means to do it. Uh, and I'm telling you, Joe Allen is going to win all of his American brothers and sisters an Olympic heavyweight gold medal. And he is going to bring the heavyweight championship of the world back to the United States. And I'm convinced of that. I love you all. Thanks for listening to an old guy ranting on boxing and other things. And uh, We want you all to know we love you. Get strong. Be strong. Do the best you can in adversity. And remember the Custia motto way a champion is made when he is able to continue his elite level work while going through uh, the dramatics of life.